Hey and welcome back to The Revolution and a brand new WWE 2K23 video. Over the last week, WWE and 2K have unveiled a bunch of news regarding WWE 2K23, so I thought I would round things up just in case you at home might have missed anything. To be sure you don't miss out on any of our upcoming WWE 2K23 content, hit that bell icon and subscribe to the channel. You can also stay up to date with all the latest WWE 2K23 and women's wrestling news over on our official website, www.revolution.com. Starting out last week, we had the official unveiling of this year's soundtrack with with WWE 2K23 cover star John Cena acting as this year's soundtrack curator. Following in the footsteps of Bad Bunny last year, Cena steps in with tracks provided by the likes of Metallica, Doja Cat, the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Post Malone. Sticking with John Cena, last week's ringside report delved more into the already revealed WWE 2K23 John Cena showcase with the official confirmation of all 14 matches and the superstars ready to take on Cena as part of the mode. First up we have Kurt Angle's open challenge from Smackdown 2002 which saw Cena make his debut and utter those infamous words, ruthless aggression. Next up, we have the SummerSlam 2008 matchup between Cena and Batista, followed by a WWE Championship match at SummerSlam 2006 with Edge and John Cena. Speaking of Edge, we then have the New Year's Revolution 2006 matchup between Edge and Cena, which saw Edge cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase. It's worth noting that Lita accompanied Edge in both the SummerSlam and New Year's Revolution matchups, with Lita aiding Edge to victory in the closing moments of the SummerSlam match. We won't go into too much regarding Lita just yet as we have more to discuss later on. Following that we have Night of Champions 2008 which saw Cena take on Triple H for the WWE Championship. Next up we have the first of two Brock Lesnar matches with SummerSlam 2014 as Cena puts his WWE Championship on the line against Brock Lesnar. 2003 would also see Brock and Cena compete for the WWE Championship with the recreation of their match at Backlash 2003. Sticking with 2003, we have Vengeance 2003, which saw John Cena take on The Undertaker. Jumping forward a little, we see Cena taking on one of his greatest rivals, Randy Orton, with a recreation of their 2009 Hell in a Cell WWE Championship match at the pay-per-view of the same name. We then have the SummerSlam 2021 Universal Championship match between John Cena and Roman Reigns, with Reigns defending his title against Cena. Speaking of the bloodline, we then have the once in a lifetime matchup between John Cena and The Rock from their WrestleMania 28 matchup. We then have the SummerSlam 2016 match between John Cena and AJ Styles before moving on to another matchup between Cena and The Undertaker at WrestleMania 34. Lastly, and by no means least, we have the WWE Championship match between John Cena and Rob Van Dam from ECW One Night Stand back in 2006. With so many different eras covered and so many different superstars at ties and arenas, I can only hope one day we see something similar for the women, with an icon like Trish Stratus or Lita holding the mantle after having a series of iconic matches throughout their careers. Speaking of superstars, last week also saw the official roster reveal over on 2K's official website as well as WWE.com with 46 women officially confirmed for this year's game. Before diving into the list, it's worth noting that both Nikki Cross and Scarlett at one point or another were included in the original lists but have since been removed. In regards to Scarlett, I imagine it's down to Scarlett only being available as a manager and not an in-ring superstar. As far as Nikki Cross is concerned, it could be that we have another situation similar to last year with Nikki Cross being added as part of My Rise or more likely My Faction. Returning to the officially confirmed roster, as of today, without any additional changes so far, we have Alba Fire, Alexa Bliss, Aaliyah, Asuka, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Beth Phoenix, Bianca Belair, Brie Bella, Carmella, Charlotte Flair, China, Cora Jade, Dakota Kai, Dana Brooke, Dewdrop, Gigi Dolan, Indy Hartwell, EO Sky, JC Jane, Katana Chance, Caden Carter, Lacey Evans, Lita, Liv Morgan, Maurice, Molly Holly, Natalia, Nikki ASH, Nikki Bella, Nikita Lyons, Queen Zelina, Raquel Rodriguez, Rhea Ripley, Ronda Rousey, Roxanne Perez, Shayna Baszler, Shotzi, Sonia Deville, Stacey Keebler, Stephanie McMahon, Tamina, Trish Stratus, Zia Lee, and Zoe Star. I have to say, it's a pretty damn awesome collection of women with a good mix of current day, NXT, and legend superstars all included. It is a shame that several women didn't make the cut, especially the likes of Candice LeRae, who recently returned to WWE after having a child. 
It is worth noting that since WWE 2K22, it looks as though 15 female superstars have been removed, which include Billy Kay, Candice LeRae, Ember Moon, Lana, Mandy Rose, Mia Yim, Mickey James, Naomi, Nia Jax, Peyton Royce, Reckoning, Saray, Sasha Banks, Tegan Knox, and Tony Storm. A small part of me wouldn't be surprised to see Mandy, Sasha and Naomi still make the cut, especially after last year's game, which saw several uncontracted WWE superstars still in the game. Of the three women, I would expect Mandy would be the most likely than both Sasha and Naomi after a hell of a year on NXT alongside Gigi and JC of Toxic Attraction. Needless to say, the first thing I will be doing is checking whether or not Mandy is in the game. Last week would also see the first look at several female superstars as part of WWE 2K's creator showdown over on Twitch, with the first look at the entrances and models for both Cora and Lita. But before we move on to that, I do want to touch briefly on the much improved creator superstar sneak peek. The previous week, Creator Showdown gave a quick look at several custom superstars, with the WWE Games community participating in a vote to who their favourite custom superstar was. As part of the vote, 2K gave a brief look at three custom female superstars, each with a varied look. The screenshot showcased what looks to be vast improvements to both the skin and material textures, with the custom superstars looking more lifelike than ever. Following on from the previous week, last week 2K gave another sneak peek look at the mod, with a look once again at the new skin textures, which looks hands down incredible. If the screenshot is anything to go by, I think WWE 2K23 could be the biggest year to date for players who create their own custom superstars or recreate lifelike superstars, and I can't wait to see what they put out on community creations. From the beard to the paws and the little imperfections, everything looks flawless, and it seriously has me excited to dive into create a superstar, or let's face it, create a female superstar more specifically. As mentioned previously, last week's Creator Showdown also gave a quick look at both Cora Jade and Lita, so before we dissect, let's take a look at both their entrances, starting with Cora Jade. Starting with Cora Jade, for all Cora is now somewhat out of date, I still think she looks pretty damn cool, but even more importantly, how awesome is her entrance? I have absolutely no doubt that many custom superstars will be spotting Cora's entrance by the time WWE 2K23 comes around, and I honestly can't wait to see if we can use the skateboard as a weapon. As we've said before, Cora is sporting an attire from her early NXT run, where she sported the attire in a match against Natalia. I will say that it will be interesting to see if my faction utilises the models this year and gives us a heel version of Cora like we see on TV today, especially given that Cora has her heel trends in the game. Now, moving on to a topic a little bit more controversial, Lita. Before discussing, let's take a look. I know I speak for a whole lot of you when I say we were all really excited to see Lita return to the game after being removed from 2K22. Well, Lita is back, which is great, but it's not exactly the Lita we all know and loved. I will say that I think a few things come into play when it comes to the outcry from fans regarding Lita in this year's game. One issue is that Lita once again has an inaccurate attire to the one that she wore in real life, which unfortunately has been used ever since 2K16. 
I think had Lee returned with a new attire or just a different attire altogether, I don't think there would be this initial outcry from fans because at least then we would have had something new. Not only that, but Lee has also had her Tron spliced with the WWE 2K Hall of Fame Trons, which seem to prove unpopular with the WWE games community. I think after seeing both Brie and Nikki Bella, many fans, including myself, thought that this would be the game that Lee would be updated, with a slight possibility of Lee being modelled after one of her more recent return attires. However, there might be a little glimmer of hope as not only does Lee have her heel trans from her rated R run alongside Edge, but also she seemingly has the hairstyle from that era to match. Earlier on, we mentioned how Lee could be included in the showcase as a manager after aiding Edge to win one of the matches against John Cena. I imagine after completing the showcase match, we then get rewarded with either one or two later alternate attires, or if we're lucky, maybe even a different model. Earlier on, we mentioned the Bella Twins and their return and update in 2K23, so let's take a look at their brand new models and entrances starting with Brie. I have to say I actually absolutely love how Brie looks in 2K23 and I kind of think it's the best Brie model to date. We can be seen sporting her 2022 Royal Rumble attire along with a brand new entrance for one half of the Bella Twins. The new entrance animation was available in 2K22 for players but unfortunately Brie was removed from the game so players never got the chance to see Brie sport it herself. I know many of you are fed up of hearing about hair physics but damn did the hair physics look cool on Brie, with the hair swishing side to side as she makes her way to the ring. Of course, you can't have one Bella without the other, so let's take a look at Nikki Bella. I will say that Brie Bella, for me, is the better looking of the two models, but I actually still really like Nikki Bella in 2K23. As many of us know, the entrance animation for Nikki Bella, for some reason, gives the user some quirky facial animations, so I'm excited to see what Nikki's model looks without the face scrunching. In many shots, you can see that Nikki has been updated like Sister Brie, and is also spotting her Royal Rumble 2022 attire. Like Brie, she's also spotting her more current short hair, which I think really suits Nikki, and I can't wait to use her in my custom stories planned for later this year. Sticking with entrances, over the last few days, we've seen a series of brief clips with many female superstars showcasing their entrances and movesets, including a first look at both Eosky and Alexa Bliss. In a video showcase over on WWE Games' Twitter account, we first see Shotzi making her way to the ring before hitting Ronda Rousey with her Never Wake Up finisher. We then get another look at Asuka making her way to the ring before hitting the Asuka lock on Becky Lynch. Speaking of Becky, we have Becky's current rival Bailey, who makes her way to the ring before hitting poor Becky Lynch with a classic Bailey to Belly. We then get our very first official look at Alexa Bliss's entrance in 2K23, which comes with Alexa's very own Lily doll which I can only hope can be used as a weapon because, let's face it, how freaking fun would that be? We then see Alexa hit her insult to injury signature on an unsuspecting Bailey. I have to say, I absolutely love Alexa's model this year, and if I'm honest, she might just be my new favourite, if not a draw between her and Rhea Ripley. Speaking of new looks, up next we have Eo Sky and a very brief look at her entrance before Eo hits Liv Morgan with what looks to be a variation of Mandy's fairy tale ending. Like Alexa, I think Eo looks awesome this year and I can't wait to get a better look at both Eo's model and entrance as it's quite hard to take too much from the footage. 
We then get another look at Bianca Belair as she makes her way to the ring before hitting a KOD on Rhea Ripley. Sticking with Rhea, we get a brief look at Rhea making her way to the ring before taking out Bianca Belair with an electric chair face buster. Following Rhea and Bianca, we see Becky Lynch making her way to the ring along with updated facial animations compared to what many of us experienced when first playing the game. If this is anything to go by, it looks as though Becky's visor has been removed from the game which could be down to copyright from the creator of the glasses. We then see Becky hit rival Bailey with a manhandle slam before switching to Ronda Rousey making her way to the ring before tapping out Shotzi to round out the trailer. Whilst preparing this video, several nuggets of information have already been revealed by WWE and 2K with official roster ratings for Gigi Dolan and JC Jane. The former friends of Toxic Attraction unveiled their ratings for WWE 2K23 in a pretty comical video promo extending their feud as seen in recent weeks on NXT. The video unveiled that in her WWE 2K debut, JC Jane is rated an 80, with Gigi Dolan getting the last laugh with a rating of 81. I have to say, it would be pretty cool if the duo could somehow work this into their feud, even if it's just for a simple little gag. As well as Gigi and JC, Trish Stratus would also go on to reveal her official rating for 2K23, with a rating of 93, compared to last year's rating of 88. Trish also revealed a first look at a model for this year's game which, unfortunately, looks to be identical to the past few games. Whilst the lighting and materials look so much better this time around, it's hard to be too excited when there are so many iconic Trish Stratus attires that we could have had. I don't think Trish necessarily looks bad, I just think after having the same look for the last few years, the effect wears off and I think most would agree we would like something new. I think most of us would agree that, like later, we went into this year's game hoping for a different classic version of Trish, if not one of the more modern day looks Trish has been spotting during her frequent returns over the last few years. As I say, I don't think Trish looks bad by any means. I would just like to see a more iconic look of Trish as represented in the game. So, before any more information comes out and I just keep talking and talking, I think we better wrap up today's video. There are so many awesome looks in this year's game, with Alexa especially being a huge standout. That's not to say there isn't some slight disappointments when it comes to the likes of the women's legends, but the fact that we have them in the game will just have to be enough for now. Hopefully Trish and Lita especially have some alternate looks with that possible showcase option, if not my faction. This coming Wednesday, WWE and 2K are set to unveil the official ratings for WWE 2K23 alongside Up Up Down Down, so be sure to stay tuned to the channel for all the official women's ratings later in the week. To be sure you don't miss out on any of our upcoming WWE 2K23 women's content, hit that bell icon and subscribe to the channel. You can also keep on up to date with all the latest women's wrestling news and so much more by heading over to our official website www.revolution.com. Until next time, I've been The Revolution.